Governor Murphy, thank you so much for the time today. How are you? I'm doing great, Maggie. Thank you and Moose for having me as always. No, you thank you, Our Governor. Pleasure. And, you know, it's a lot different than when we talked to you this time last year, which was right before Memorial Day. And we've talked to you since, obviously, but before Memorial Day, the unofficial sort of beginning of summer, especially around the Jersey Shore, and you announced some really big changes, the loosening of some COVID restrictions, some social distancing rules, indoor mask mandates in some cases, and we'll get into all that. But let's start here. What numbers did you see in New Jersey that made you feel comfortable making some of these big changes? It is good to be back with you. Man, what a difference a year makes, to your point. Um, Good Lord. Um, So we follow sort of two sets of data. One is the viral data, which is things like hospitalizations, positivity rate, rate of transmission, how sick are people getting. Um, We look at this as well regionally, uh, and all of those numbers have continued to go in a very good positive direction. Even since the CDC made their move on indoor masking, we held back a little bit, and and we think we we benefited from doing that. The other set of numbers is our, our, our vaccine program. Uh, how deep is it getting? What's the penetration like? We look particularly at first shots, uh, if it's Pfizer or Moderna, because we know that's the tee up for likely three to four weeks from now, getting somebody fully vaccinated. We're trying to get the uh, get to 70 percent of our our adult population fully vaccinated by the end of June. It's going to be close. I think we got a real shot. The other piece there, Maggie, is equity. We still have uh, uh, wood to chop, as it were, in both black and brown communities. So we have an extra effort, uh, literally including door knocking, going from houses of worship, right, to get your vaccination, etc. So those are the that's a quick summary of the data that we look at, and we felt comfortable that we could take safely and responsibly the steps that we announced yesterday. Governor, as a um, as a state, are you co- are you confident that you'll get to that seventy percent mark? I know you're you're looking at the end of of June. Are you confident that you'll get to that seventy percent mark or four point seven million Jersey yeah, residents by I'd, the end of June? I'd say most cautiously optimistic. Uh, okay. it, it is definitely about a month ago. It, it, it's exactly what we expected, but it happened. It flipped almost overnight from a supply-demand imbalance where we had more people who wanted shots than we had, and we knew at some point it would happen, and it happened quickly where it went the other way. So we we've, we've basically have got to take the vaccines to the people as opposed to what had been the case of the people coming to the vaccine. we got a bunch of different programs. Operation Jersey Summer is the overarching uh, theme. I think we'll get there, but you know we, we still need folks. If you're listening right now and you haven't been vaccinated, these are safe. They work. And your health risk, your personal health risk is a lot higher if you don't get vaccinated than if you do. Governor Phil Murphy joins us now. And okay, so some places where you are still going to need a mask um, are what are some of the notable places to make sure that people are prepared yep. um, if they go somewhere and it's it's not fully in the clear yet? Great, great question, because we, we don't want folks uh, surprised by that. Any health care facility, long-term care facility, any place where there is, that which houses a vulnerable population like a correction facility, and probably most regularly for folks, planes, trains, buses. If you're in public transportation and you're moving around, at least for the foreseeable future, we're going to have to ask you to keep your mask on. That's not unique to Jersey. That's CDC national guidance, and I think it makes sense because you're on, you know, you're inside on top of each other. Governor, how about gatherings? Um, you know, summer months, barbecues, big barbecues, beaches, wherever it might be, yep. having a, a party. At. What about uh, what's going to be the messaging here right now in terms of large gatherings? Yep. What's the number for the gatherings? So this Friday, the big steps this Friday, Moose, are we're getting rid of the indoor mask mandate, except in those places like the places I mentioned, and we're relaxing the six-foot social distancing. Uh, basically, if you're vaccinated, uh, you don't need to wear a mask and you don't need to social distance. And by the way, we're not going to put a, a a store employee into the position of judge or jury. We're asking folks to do the right thing. Next Friday, the 4th of June, we're list- the outdoor capacities have already been lifted a few weeks ago. Next Friday, we're lifting all capacities inside. So as long as people are responsible and please God, preferably they're vaccinated, uh, they can they can let it rip uh, both indoors and outdoor gatherings this summer. So does that mean like indoor concerts and things like that? Even that something that big? It does. 
Okay. It does. And that'll be, again, Maggie, that's not until a week from this Friday. We, we, we basically, if you follow our pattern, we have loosened things outdoors before we loosen them indoors. And this is probably one, one of the last steps in, in that reality, and God willing. We've got this virus on the run. We're not, we're not home yet. You know, people are still getting sick, and sadly, people are still dying. But we've beaten this thing down uh, dramatically, and, and uh, we're confident we could take these steps. Governor, what are the health officials telling you about the different variants? You know, we're watching, if you, you know, watching the news, what's going on in India right now is absolutely heartbreaking. You know, we've yep. seen how fast the virus and the variants can spread around the globe. What are health officials telling you about that yeah. in the state of New Jersey? Again, great questions, because remember, we talked about this a lot last year. We're the densest state in America in the densest region in America, which is normally, by the way, a really good thing for our state and our economy. Not such a good thing in a pandemic, and, and, and the variants are no exception to that. So we've got the New York variant, the U.K., the Brazil, the Indian. They're all in New Jersey. Um, you know, it's pretty clear the, the evidence now, again, the, the data is incomplete. The science is incomplete, and I'm certainly not a scientist. But every, every medical uh, study that we're in touch with says, and this is good news, these vaccines really work. That doesn't mean you may not be still susceptible to getting COVID, uh, but they work for sure, uh, and they claim 100% um, uh, efficacy of keeping you out of the hospital and keeping you alive. Um, And that looks like it's still the case with the variants. India is a tragedy, um, very much under-vaccinated. Even in the UK, where they went the route of, you know what, we we know the manufacturers are telling us it should be a two-shot regime. In other words, you get your first shot, then you get a booster a few weeks later. The, the U.K. went with, uh, for a lot of folks, stretching that second shot out. It looks like, and again, I'm not a scientist, but it looks like they've been more exposed than they otherwise would have been now to the Indian variant, which is running pretty wild in the U.K. I think it's the dominant variant right now there. So we watch them like a hawk, and we're going to have to continue to. Governor, what is um, just looking ahead to the fall, um, you know, for the mom and dad out there that have students, college students, high school students, elementary school students, what do you envision the student life going to be like in the fall? No masks. I know there was a a protest on the Rutgers campus the other day or Mm -hmm. just outside of it about the vaccinations and everything. Mm -hmm. What do you envision like student life going to be like on all three of those levels next fall? Yeah. I'll take pre-K through 12, which is uh, the the first part of that, and and that's where the biggest population is. Um, We'll probably put guidance out as a state in June. We did that last year, pretty thick book uh, with guidance. I think, Moose, given that we just started vaccinating 12 to 15-year-olds, and by the way, the take-up in New Jersey so far is really good, um, but that's in process. And secondly, we have not yet got a vaccine that's been approved for any kids under 12. My gut tells me if you had to, if you asked me to predict what school looks like in the fall, probably still masking uh, would be my guess, at least at, in, in the grade levels where there's either incomplete vaccinations or they're just not, um, they're, they're not available yet. Um, uh, so my guess is, you know, a, a significant amount of the, the protocols will still be with us. But, and this is a big but, um, we have uh, eliminated the, the uh, as of last week the waiver that you could be remote and still qualify for your 180 day minimum uh, education requirement. We're back in business. We're back physically in school Monday through Friday. Obviously, if somebody's got a life threatening reality, an educator or a kid, we're, we're obviously going to take that into account. We always have. This is no exception. On higher ed, it sort of will depend on on the school, whether it's state-related or not. I think 400 universities in the country right now have followed Rutgers, mandating that the students coming back get vaccinated. I know that isn't necessarily popular in all corners, um, but the fact of the matter is I think you're going to see higher ed, uh, regardless of how they approach it, I think you're going to see them back full-on, in-person, in business this fall as well. 
Governor Phil Murphy joining us for just a couple more minutes and always appreciate him carving out time for us. You mentioned about, um, you know, minority communities and trying to make inroads there in terms of getting the vaccine. Uh, Have you found that, you know, the programs you're having, have they turned out to be effective? Is there more that needs to be done? Yeah, they they are effective and it is a work in progress. So the, the needle is moving in the right direction in our black and brown communities. Uh, but it needs to continue to keep moving. So faith-based institutions and faith leadership have been huge. Our mobile vans help a lot. We have a door-knocking campaign, literally going to your house. Uh, I'll give you an example. Yesterday, I'm not sure exactly the communities today, but I know yesterday the five communities we were knocking on doors in were Camden, Trenton, Bayonne, Jersey City, Passaic City, uh, if you look at those five communities, overwhelmingly a population of color, uh, that's for a reason. that They are under-vaccinated relative to where they need to be. Uh, and we'll continue to pound away across the whole from the sort of fun stuff, you know, a shot and a beer at our breweries or free state, state park pass for the balance of the year beginning this Thursday, all the way to the, you know, the, the grinded out stuff door knocking, uh, grateful for the shot, something my wife came up with with, uh, with with a lot of great help, you know, going basically from worship to going right to get your vaccination. Uh, so, it, it, yes, it's working, but we still have a ways to go. It is working, Governor. But what's been the most frustrating from your perspective aspect of, of the communication or I would say kind of the miscommunication that you've seen here around the vaccine? Well, I think there's a lot of myths, Moose, that just aren't based on fact. Um, And we always knew that there would be some amount of an anti-vax block. And that block is about the the size that we had predicted. That that alone does not jeopardize our ability to get to 70 percent of our adults vaccinated fully by the end of June. But there are some myths about, you know, what it does to women of childbearing ages and whatnot. And and, and so we've had to battle back against that. You've also had a lot of very legitimate reasons here. You know, in, in communities of color, the, the, our U.S. history as it relates to health care and other prior vaccination uh, programs uh, is, not, is, not, is not a pretty one. Um, so, so we've had to lean on role models, including doctors and nurses, to, to be visible getting vaccinated and to, and to show that, you know what, this is safe and it works. So folks who are working two, two jobs uh, who want to get vaccinated, but, but they just, you know, it's, it's not easy for them. So there's, there's some stuff out there that we don't like, some myths, but there's also a lot of legitimate reasons that our program is trying to chop through. You know, Governor, last one for me is that it, it's come pretty quick here, right? You mentioned yep. after the CDC recommendation, you waited, your state waited, you waited 11 days to make the announcement that you did yesterday. Um, are, you, are you surprised at how quickly... We, it's turned here with everything that, that we've all been through here for the last 16 months? Yeah, I mean, Moose, we were saying as far back as December that we were hanging, I, I think I used the phrase, I'm going to hang my hat on Memorial Day. We thought we, we had this sort of directed toward that, particularly based on what we expected the vaccine supply to be. Early on, it was a little bit more challenging on the supply side, uh, but we got the, the kinks worked out, and we've probably got as successful a big state program is anywhere anybody and that doesn't mean we're 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 there yet but um i i i i you know we saw this coming the numbers are going dramatically in the right direction i feel confident this is the right time and the right steps to take governor murphy last one for me it was a big yesterday amongst the many announcements was that the jets and the giants are going to be able to have obviously the full capacity the preseason yeah. this might be the first time a preseason game is at full capacity so that will be interesting <laughs> what kind of a milestone did that did that mean to you? Oh, it's a big deal. It is a big deal. Uh, and I'm thrilled that that's part of the reality as of this Friday. And by the way, a week from Friday, the same thing will go toward indoor venues like the Prudential Center. Rutgers just moved on. If you saw yesterday, their, their Temple game got moved in a prime time on September 2nd. Uh, I'm looking forward to being there myself. Uh, I, I think, you know, sports and entertainment, which have been clobbered in this pandemic, People are desperate to get back rooting in person, uh, and I can't wait for it to happen. 
Governor, Governor Murphy. Murphy, we can't thank you enough for the time today. We appreciate it. Uh, always great having you on and uh, continued success for your state and, and have a, a, a good and safe and successful holiday weekend. All right. You betcha. Same to you, Moose and Maggie. Thank you so much for everything and for having me and hosting so graciously.